Hi everyone, my name's Dibutor, and today I'm going to show you how to get the Blasphemous Blade as quickly and easily as possible. I'll also show you how to upgrade it to plus 10 along the way. Its Ash of War, Taker's Flames, is extremely strong and also heals you on hit. In order to get the Blasphemous Blade, we need to kill Rykard at the Volcano Manor. So I'll show you how to get to him and also how to beat him as easily as possible. The main obstacle between us and Rykard is the Godskin Noble at the Volcano Manor. In my opinion, the Noble is even harder than Rykard in a fair fight. So I'll show you how to make this fight as unfair as possible. For him. This step-by-step -step guide is intended for beginners, but more experienced players will also be able to learn a lot of things along the way. To start off, we're going to stop by Kale at the Church of Ele in Lemgrave. We're going to buy the three cracked pots that he sells, as well as the crafting kit, and optionally a bunch of throwing daggers. We'll use the cracked pots later on to make sleep pots, which we'll use against the Godskin Noble. We're also going to stop by the Groveside Cave, just to the north of the Church of Ele, where we're going to pick up another cracked pot. You can also kill the boss here, a beast man of Far Missoula, for an easy 1,000 runes. After that, we're going to follow the road to the north to the Gatefront Ruins, where we're going to talk to Melina and get the Spectral Steed Whistle to summon Torrin. We're also going to grab the map of Limgrave, and we're going to stop inside the cellar of the ruins, so we can grab the Stormstomp Ash of War and the Whetstone Knife. I didn't end up using Storm Stomp here, but it may come in handy at some point, and the Whetstone Knife is nice because it allows us to put Ashes of War on our weapons at any set of grace. After getting Torrent from Melina, we're going to fast travel back to the Church of Ele, where we're going to talk to Renna the Witch and get the Spirit Calling Bell. We're also going to go to the beach to the west of the church, where we're going to talk to a nomadic merchant and purchase a club, if you don't already have a strike weapon. He can be found underneath the giant ruin that I just marked on the map. The club costs 600 runes to purchase, so it should be pretty easy to get. While you're here, you can also buy some smithing stones from him, which is nice, and he also sells a crafting recipe for neutralizing boluses, which allows you to cure poison in case you get poisoned. But the things that are important to pick up here are the club, if you don't have a different strike weapon, and the three smithing stones, which we're going to use to upgrade the club. After that, we're going to head back to the gate front, and we're going to follow the road to the west up into Stormhill. We're going to pass by the Stormhill Shack, where we're going to grab a set of grace. And there are also a few points of interest we're going to stop at to pick up a few important items along the way. Make sure you grab the Golden Seed along the way. The Stormhill Shack is on that cliff right up there. We're going to head over to the east and grab these smithing stones from this circle of chairs. Then we're going to circle around and grab the Stormhill Shack Site of Grace. There's also a Stone Sword Key we're going to grab. We're going to need a total of two of these, and I will show you where to get a second one along the way. After that, we're going to head up this hill to the northeast, where we're going to grab the Strength Knot Crystal Tier. We're going to use this tier to increase our strength so we can wield a couple weapons later on. After that, we're going to head back down to the road and follow it east toward the Warmaster Shack. At the Warmaster Shack, we're going to talk to Warmaster Bernal, and we're going to buy the Endure Ash of War from him, as well as the Impaling Thrust Ash of War. This will cost 1,600 runes total. We're also going to head up this hill to the northeast, where we're going to kill a knight to grab the Golden Vow Ash of War, and we're going to stop on top of that square ruin to grab the Lance. Along the way, we're also going to stop by this patch of fire over here, and we're going to grab a bunch of Smoldering Butterflies. If you need to farm Smoldering Butterflies, this is a great place to do it. You rest at the Site of Grace at the Warmaster Shack, and that makes the butterflies respawn. We're also going to come over here and kill this knight. You saw I hit him with a jumping R2 when I jumped off of the horse, and then while he was casting Golden Vow, which keeps him locked in that animation, I hit him with another charged R2 and that knocked him off the horse. After that, he gave me a little bit of trouble because of his shield, but he shouldn't be too hard to kill, and on death he drops the Golden Vow Ash of War. We're also going to come to the cliff overlooking the road to the south, and you see this big square ruin. We're going to jump down to that. And in the corner of the ruin, there is an item that is the Lance Great Spear. This is going to come in handy for killing Rykard and another enemy. After that, we're going to circle back to the Warmaster Shack, where we're going to grab a bunch of root resin. This is a great spot to farm root resin, so what you do is you rest at the Site of Grace, which makes the resin respawn. Then you just run over and grab it, and then you can rest at the Site of Grace again and repeat 
until you have as much root resin as you want. You should stock up on a bunch of it while you're here. I think I grabbed about 30 of them. We're going to need those so we can craft blood grease to fight the Godskin Noble. We're also going to head just to the southeast of the War Master Shack, where we're going to grab a few more smithing stones. On this big plateau, you're going to see a bunch of trolls walking around, so lead one over to this statue. When he walks into it or hits it, it'll break, and inside the statue are a bunch of smithing stone ones and a smithing stone two. We're also going to head to the southern cliff here and follow it to the east. There's a spirit spring that we can jump down to if we're on torrent, then we land without taking fall damage. And just around the corner from that, there's another smithing stone one. After that, we're going to keep heading east. We're going to cross over the Limgrave Ravine by using this ruin. There's a Site of Grace next to it if you want to grab that. Jump up the ruin, and then you can jump up onto the cliff. And kill the nearby Exploding Scarab for a Somber Smithing Stone number one. Here's what the map looks like, in case you don't know where we are. So this is the northern part of the ravine, um, just ahead of where the bridge is. So, you can see there's a little ruin here to cross over. And then that's where the statue was. Just to the northeast of that ruin is the Artist Shack, where we're going to grab another Smithing Stone 1. There's also a set of grace here you can grab. So we have 11 Smithing Stone 1s at this point. We need one more to be able to upgrade the club to plus 3. If we go a little bit further east, there's a cliff that you don't want to jump down. Instead, you're going to follow it toward the north. Now, at the end of it, you should be able to safely jump down if you find a decent spot to land in. And we're going to stop by this graveyard where we're going to grab a bunch of golden runes. And we're also going to grab this crafting book which gives us the recipe for sleep pots, which we're going to need to kill the Godskin Noble. After that, we're going to go a little bit further to the north. We'll find these tombstones where we can go down the cliff safely. In the distance, you can see the Third Church of America. We're going to stop by there in a minute. First, we're going to come down into this little ravine area where there's a giant bear and there's going to be a bunch of wolves that spawn in. Be careful not to get murdered by the bear like you're about to see me do in a second, but this grotto has a smithing stone too and a couple Trina's lilies that we're going to need. So as you saw, I got murked by the fucking bear, so don't do that. Instead, let the bear and the wolves start fighting, and then when you see an opening, go grab the stone. Here I almost died again, but I got lucky and escaped. Grab the smithing stone too, and then by the waterfall, there's also a couple Trina's lilies, which we're going to need to craft sleep pots. After that, we're going to head to the east, where we're going to stop by the Third Church of America and grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic, as well as a Sacred Tear to upgrade our healing flasks. From the Third Church, we're going to follow the road to the south, towards Fort Height. We're also going to stop by the Minor Erd Tree along the way, where we're going to pick up the map of the area, as well as a couple Crystal Tears for the Physic. We're also going to grab the Axe Talisman and another Smithing Stone too from the Mistwood Ruins. At the foot of the Minor Erd Tree is the two Crystal Tears we're going to grab, and then if you head west towards the road, that's where the ruins are. Inside the ruins, there's a couple items we're going to pick up. So first, here's a golden rune if you need 400 runes. There's also a bunch of Trina's lilies, and there's a smithing stone too inside this chest in the tower. You'll also hear Blythe howling up on top of the tower. We're going to come back and talk to him towards the end of this guide when we make the build for the uh, Blasphemous Blade. So grab the Trina's lilies there in the area. Try not to get murdered by the bear. He's guarding the entrance to the cellar, and we want to go down there to grab the Axe Talisman, which is going to be helpful against the Godskin Noble. From the Mistwood Ruins, we're going to keep following the road to the south, where we're going to come to Fort Height. Up in Fort Height, there's a few things we need to grab. So first of all, just outside of it, there's a Golden Seed. Make sure you grab that. Then inside, there's a bunch of Blood Roses you can grab, though we're going to farm more of them later. And there's also the recipe for blood grease inside this room, which we're going to need to kill the Godskin Noble. And then if you head up to the top level of Fort Height, there's a tower with a ladder you can climb up. And at the top of the ladder is a chest that contains the left half of the Dectus Medallion, which we're going to use to get to the Altus Plateau and then to Rykard. Optionally, you can kill the Knight for his Bloody Slash Ash of War, which is really strong. After that, we're going to fast travel back over to the Third Church of America. Just to the north of it, there's this little pond that has a teleporter. We're going to take this over to the Bestial Sanctum and Grail's Dragon Barrow. As you can see, we've gone a pretty significant distance, so that saves us a lot of running. From the Bestial Sanctum, we're going to head to the south. There's a road we're going to follow toward that minor Erd tree over there. Along the way, make sure you grab the Golden Seed on the road. There's also a Sight of Grace right before the Big Ass Bridge. On the bridge is a dragon, but you can typically just run past him and he won't hit you. If he does hit you, then you die and respawn at the Sight of Grace, so it's not a big deal. Behind the tree, there's a Spirit Spring, which we're going to jump up on Torrent. And that takes us up to Fort Faroth, 
We're going to come back here to farm runes from the giant dragon later. But for now, you can run inside Fort Faroth, just run past all the bats on the first level to the ladder, climb up it, and at the top of it, there's a chest that has the right half of the Dectus Medallion. I didn't show it here, but you can also get Radagon's Sword Seal from Fort Faroth. While we're in the area, we're going to head south of Fort Faroth over the Smoldering Wall. Next to the giant skull over here, there's a Spirit Spring you can jump down, and this gives us an easy shortcut over to the Church of the Plague, which you can see just to the south. We're going to stop by over here to grab the Sacred Tear to upgrade our flasks. After that, we're going to head back to the Stormhill Shack. We're going to follow the road to the north to the Broken Bridge. We're going to head off the west side of the bridge and follow the cliff around Stormvale Castle and up into Lyurnia of the Lakes. Here's the end of the bridge. There's a crafting recipe on that corpse there, but it's not relevant to this guide, so I didn't bother to grab it. And then we're going to follow the path up to this cliff and follow the cliff around to the Yernia. We're going to grab the Site of Grace here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to stop by the church over there to grab the Sacred Tear that's inside of it, and then we're going to follow the road to the west and north into the Yernia where we're going to grab the map. When you follow the road down to the lake level, you'll come across this nomadic merchant. You're going to need at least 1,800 runes here because you're going to want to buy the lantern from him. He also sells a bunch of smithing stones, so you should buy those too while you're here if you have the runes for it. After talking to the merchant, we're just going to follow the blue lights on the submerged road to the north, and that'll take us to the map marker. There's three guys around it, so I like to get close to them and then lower them away so they don't stun lock me when I go to grab the map. Once they're far enough away, grab the map, and then keep following the road to the nearby site of Grace. We're going to head past the Lascar Ruins, which you see on the left, and we're going to keep heading north until we get to the nearby gazebo, where we're going to talk to Raya to start her quest line. Raya wants us to go to the Boil Prawn Shack, to the northwest of here, and grab her necklace from the guy who stole it from her. First, we're going to stop at the little island just to the west of the gazebo here. So I don't show it on the map there, but it's this thing right here directly to the west of the gazebo because there's a site of grace up here that we're going to come back to later when we need to come back to Raya. And then after that, we're going to head to the northwest. Here you can see on the right side, there's the gazebo. So we headed just straight from the west to get to this island here. But anyway, from there, we're going to head to the northwest over to the Boil Prawn Shack. So here's the map. You can see that's the site of graves that we just grabbed. There's Raya, and then it's just directly to the northwest of that island. Talk to Bog the Blackguard and buy the necklace back from him. It'll cost you a thousand runes. You can also kill him for it, but you shouldn't. Uh, so, you know, just get a thousand runes and buy it from him. And then we're not going to head back to Raya immediately. Instead, from the Boil Prawn Shack, we're going to head directly to the south. There's a little island over there, which has the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear, which may come in handy uh, later on. I don't think I used it in this guide, but it might come in handy. And then after that, we're also going to head directly to the west of the Boil Prawn Shack, and we're going to grab a few more items in that area. There's a couple Alban Oryx on this island, so be careful of them, but in the basin, there's the Dex Tear. After that, like I said, head directly to the west of the Boil Prawn Shack. So, there's this gazebo here that's guarded by sleeping lobsters. When you go up onto the gazebo, they're going to attack you. So afterwards, our escape plan is we're going to head to the southwest towards those big things of rocks over there. Um, chances are you're going to die, because I did in this clip. But in the gazebo, there's a bunch of smithing stone twos. And then, you know, the fucking lobsters are sniping me, so I ended up dying. Fortunately, you're going to respawn at the boil prawn shack, so you're not far from where we started. And then we're going to head to the southwest through these rocks over here, and you'll find the gazebo with the folly on the lake side of Greece. In a little bit, we're going to grab the map, and I'll show it with the actual detail of the map filled in, but there's where it is relative to the Boil Prawn Shack. So at the folly on the lake side of Greece, we can farm mushrooms, so there's two just to the east of it, and then if you head around the north under this big rock, there's four more, and then you can run back to the Grace, rest at it, and all the mushrooms respawn. So stock up on a bunch of mushrooms while you're here, and then we're going to head south into the Albernark village. There's a couple smithing stone twos there that you want to grab. And then if we follow the poison muck around the corner, we're going to grab a bunch of Trina's lilies over here. This should be sufficient uh, for fighting the Godskin Noble later on. Um, so after this, I'm not going to grab any more in this guide. But there are plenty scattered around the map. And then in this area, you're going to see this thing of crystals up here. So you're going to run north through this. And this will take us to this rock over here, guarded by a crab. And there's a couple somber smithing stone ones if you want to grab those. Then keep heading north, and you're going to come over to the Rose Church. Inside the Rose Church, we can farm Blood Roses, which we're going to need for the Blood Grease. Uh, there's eight Blood Roses here you can grab, and they respawn when you rest at a site of grace. 
So grab all of them and run away from the Sangha Noble before he kicks your ass. And then if you head to the east, there's a big ruin over here with a set of grace on it. So this is the best spot to farm Blood Roses in the early game until you get to Mogwen Palace. We're also going to need to come back to the Rose Church later on when we want to upgrade the uh, Blasphemous Blade. So it's important to grab the set of grace and save us a little effort later on. Uh, here's where the Folly on the Lake is relative to it. And you can see the Boil Prawn Shack and the Scenic Isle. So we're going back to the Scenic Isle and then we're going to head over to Raya and talk to her to give her the necklace. After doing that, Raya will give you an invitation to Volcano Manor, so we can use that later on to go up to the Volcano Manor, where we fight Rykard to get the Blasphemous Blade. Then we're going to head north, so I marked the Central Lyarnia map, but if you come directly north from Raya's gazebo, there's another gazebo here that is guarded by a lobster, so be careful not to get murdered by him. And in this gazebo, there's a few Smithing Stone 3s, so we're going to want to grab those, because we're going to need to upgrade the lance later on. Then go grab the map in the Site of Grace at the Academy Gate Town. So you can see here, that's the gazebo we were just at. Uh, here's the Boil Prawn Shack, the Scenic Isle. There's Raya. So again, just directly north of uh, Raya's gazebo. Uh, here's where we grab those Smithing Stone 2s. There's the Fallen Ruins on the lake. You can see it's the westmost ruins there. The Rose Church on that island. I think this gazebo has a couple more Smithing Stone 2s, but I didn't go stop by it. And there's the Folly on the lake and the Albanoric Village. Anyway, so in the gate town, we're going to head up to Ray of the Carrier Academy. Along the way, you'll see there's the Finger Reader Crone at the end of the bridge here. Right next to her, there's this L-shaped building here. So we're going to grab a golden seed from right there. And then just to the north and then to the west of it, there's a staircase that leads us up to the raised part of the gate town. And that takes us to the south Ray of the Carrier Gate. So grab the golden seed, then head just north of it. Go left. You'll come up the road, or up the stairs, and to the gate town. Grab the smithing stone 3 that's here, and then up to the gate. We need to go inside the gate for a little shortcut that we're going to take. So, to get inside the gate, we need to come to this island, to the west of Rhea the Caria, and grab the uh, Academy Glintstone Key that's being guarded by a dragon over there. We're going to take a shortcut down to lake level, so you come to this giant rock over here, as you're going to see in a second. So come around the corner here, jump down onto the rock. As long as you land on the rock, you'll survive the fall. If you land in the water, then you'll probably die. There's also a graveyard here where you can grab a bunch of golden runes. After that, you can just head straight over to the island. We're going to swing around the back side of it because I don't feel like dealing with this dragon right now. So if you're on Torrent, you can jump on top of this rock formation with a little bit of effort. And then what you're going to want to do is get off of Torrent. And if you hug this wall here, then when you drop down, the dragon won't wake up and aggro. So you can see uh, he hasn't woken up. And we're going to grab the glintstone key off the sorcerer's body. And then instead of going back to the south gate, there's a few more things we need to do over here. So we're going to head to the northwest to the shoreline over there. So when you go past the dragon here, it's going to wake up, but you can run away before it attacks you. Head up to the land on the shore and you're going to find a set of grace. We're going to head just north of it towards those red jellyfish over there. They're guarding the jellyfish shield. There's also a little bit of blood grease here you can grab, so that's helpful. And then from there, we're going to keep heading north. We're going to run through this camp. And you're just going to follow the road all the way to the north. Along the way, we're going to stop over in the leak. And you'll see all these balloons here. If you pop them with throwing daggers, then they give you a golden rune six. They don't respawn, but, you know, it's nice to get all those runes. And if you keep following the road to the north, then you'll come to the map for the west side of the Urnia. And there's also a side of grace next to it. So here's where we just came from. The foot of the four belfries is where the jellyfish were. That was the island with the dragon on it. And now we're at the northern lakeshore where we just grabbed the map. So we're going to head north through the King's Realm Ruins. At the north part of the ruins, there's this big wall, this archway thing. That's an illusory wall, so just hit it with anything and it'll disappear. Grab the Sight of Grace and we're going to talk to E.G. the Troll. Here you can stock up on infinite somber smithing stone 1s and 2s. And he also sells a few 3 and 4s. We're going to need 2 of each of these, but you're only going to need to buy one 4 here because we're going to grab the 1s, 2s, and 3s and other spots that we're about to go to. If you head southeast from the Grace, then you can jump over to this cliffside here. If you go to the end of the cliff, which right here, if you go to this part of the cliff, you can jump down safely to the lower part uh, on the lake level. We're going to head to this little shore over here where there's a somber stone 4 we're going to grab. So here's where we just came from. And then on this corpse over here, there's a somber stone 4. So we only need to buy one somber stone 4 from EG. And then after that, we're going to go back to the Rio the Caria gate, where we're going to head into the main academy gate area. That's where we just came from. We're going to take the east gate. So first, we're going to go across the bridge. And at the end of it, there's a golden seed. So make sure you grab that. 
and then we're going to take the seal, and that'll take us to the east gate, which is on the Bellum Highway. Make sure you grab the grace here, because we're going to need to come back in a little bit. And then we're going to head over to the Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, which I marked there on the map. So if you come to the eastern end here, you can jump down to a lower part of the cliff. And then all the way down at the lake level, you see there's a spirit spring you can jump down into. So if you're on Torrent and you land in the spirit spring, you don't take any fall damage from any height. So jump down into that. And then it's just a straight shot over to the Crystal Tunnel. Inside the Crystal Tunnel, we're going to grab the Sight of Grace. Make sure you put Endure on the club. We're going to need Endure on the club to fight the boss here. So the first area that we're in, there's a Somber Smithing Stone 2 inside the chest. And then there's another Somber Stone 3 just behind it. So make sure you grab those. There's a lot of regular Smithing Stone 2s and 3s in this tunnel. And you're going to want to loot them. But they're not super important because we're going to get the bell bearing for an infinite number of them in a little bit. Uh, but when you come to this elevator room, uh, instead of taking the elevator, jump down onto this little hidden area on the side, and you can follow the tunnel around. This takes you to this big open chamber, and then there's a somber stone too here, and then if you jump down onto this lower secret area, there's a somber stone 3 on this corpse, and then to get down from here, just stand on top of the candle, and then you want to walk towards the corpse's head, just walk straight off, and that drops you safely down onto the uh, platform here. We grabbed the materials to craft fire pots earlier, and this is the reason why, because they're really effective against these guys. So, especially the ones that cast the uh, magic bolts at you, um, the fire pots are super effective against them, so if you're having trouble, uh, just throw fire pots at them. Uh, here's a shortcut elevator, in case you die in the lower parts of the tunnel. Uh, and anyway, so you keep heading through the tunnel. When you get to this room, there's another somber stone 1 in that area there, so make sure you grab that. And then there's another elevator room with a secret area that has a somber stone 3, so make sure you grab that. And then you can just safely jump down uh, off these little ledges here, and this takes you to the bottom of the shaft. And then just before the boss room, there's another somber stone 1. So at this point, we have enough 1, 2s, and 3s uh, for the Blasphemous Blade and the Serpent Hunter that we're going to use to kill Rykard. While we're here, we're going to want to kill the Crystallian. So, uh, it should be really simple. She gave me a little bit of trouble here because she wouldn't stop doing this fucking spin technique. Um, obviously, you know, I think I'm at level 1 at this point. Um, so, you know, I don't have any armor on either. You should have armor and more vigor. If you use Endure, um, then you can hit her with a couple charged R2s. Using the club, it should only take two charged R2s. So, that was one of them. And then the next charge R2 will uh, break her stance. If you use Endure, then when she hits you, it doesn't, like, stun you. So it won't interrupt your attack. And that makes it easier to actually hit her with the charge R2s. After you break her stance with the two charge R2s, um, then she's super weak to all damage. And she gets stunned by anything you hit her with. So she'll be really easy to kill after you break her stance. And then on death, she drops the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing number 1. So you now have access to infinite Smithing Stone 1s and 2s. Uh, from the Twin Maiden Husk is the round table hold. After that, we're going back up to the East Academy Gate. We're going to stop by the Bellum Church that I just marked on the map there. And then we're going to follow the cliff to the north uh, up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. So here's the Bellum Church. There's a set of grace here. Make sure you grab it. There's the Sacred Tear at the statue here. And then we're going to follow the cliff. You're going to want to stay close to the cliff. Just watch your step and don't accidentally fall off. You stay close to the cliff because if you go too close to the main road... Then there's a bunch of trebuchets up here that'll shoot at you, and that is not good. Anyway, so come up to the Grand Lift of Dectus. We grab the two halves of the medallion so we can take it up to the Altus Plateau. We're going to be greeted by Raya up here since she gave us the invitation to the manor. Don't talk to her yet. We're going to come back to her in a little bit. Instead, we're going to go north over here uh, to the site of Grace up on this rocky area. So make sure you grab that. We're going to use it to fast travel back to Raya later on. And then we're going to head into the Altus Plateau, follow the road. There's a Site of Grace there, and then if you follow the North Fork, there's a Golden Seed, and there's the map of the area. So here's the Site of Grace. Make sure you grab this. Then if you follow the road to the north, there's a Golden Seed just ahead. Make sure you grab that, and then keep going north. And here's the map of the area. And then just to the west of the map, you're going to see there's a church over here. So this is the second Church of America where we're going to grab another sacred tier. There's a few dogs in this area, and they can do a lot of damage, so be careful of them. And inside the church, there's also going to be a sanguine noble that spawns, so you're going to want to run away before he murders you. Uh, and then after that, fast travel back to the Altus Highway Junction, which is the grace that we grabbed over here. So that's where we went. And now we're going to head into the Landell Capital Outskirts. But instead of going up the big road there where there's a lot of enemies that we have to fight, 
Uh, we're instead going to follow the south wall of it, and we're going to hug the wall so we don't have to deal with any enemies. So, you can see here, just kind of to the south of it, hug the wall. There's also enemies to your right over here, so that's why you want to stay close to the wall. Once you get up to the uh, main wall of the capital outskirts, you can jump up on top of this ledge here and then just jump over this little squeeze. There's two tree sentinels here. Um, chances are one of them will follow you when you run past them, uh, but there's a steady race right here you can grab and you can easily outrun him, so it's not a big deal. There are two golden seeds to grab here, so make sure you grab those bad boys. And there's also the map of the capital outskirts, so make sure you grab that. And then we're going to be heading to the east down to the sealed tunnel. So you can see that's right down here in the moat. To get down into the moat, there's a land bridge thing here that we can come down. So just head directly east from the site of grace and you'll see it. So that's this bad boy right here. And then once you're in the moat, just go to the south end of it. And there's the entrance to the sealed tunnel. There's a lot of illusory walls in here, so you're going to want to keep an eye out for those to be able to navigate through it. Um, there's also a bunch of smithing stone fives here. I didn't pick any of them up, um, but you're probably going to want to. Um, there's, I think, like six or seven of them in the sealed tunnel. Anyway, so inside this chest uh, in the first room, there's the smithing stone miners bell bearing number two. That gives us access to infinite smithing stone threes and fours at the twin maiden husks in the round table hold. And then uh, again, another elevator chamber. Uh, there's a smithing stone five there and the secret thing all the elevator rooms in these tunnels uh, have the same secret spot so uh, always grab those and then the main thing that we're here for besides the bell bearing is this big room here so you're gonna see at the bottom of this chamber just like above my guy's head there um there's a somber smithing stone five that we're gonna want to grab uh so it's being guarded by a bunch of vulgar militia guys um if you want to survive this, then you're going to want to kill the vulgar militia before you jump down. Um, I don't really care because I'm just here for the somber stone. Uh, so jump down. There's a virgin abductor guarding it. So you're going to want to bait it out, dodge its attack, and then go grab the somber stone five. And then I tried to use the memory of grace to get out of here faster than dying and respawning. Um, but the vulgar militia was like, fuck you. So that didn't work out. Anyway, so after that, I'm going to talk to Melina because I haven't done that yet. And she's going to take me to the round table hold. We're coming here because we're going to hand in those two bell bearings over at the Twin Maiden Husks, so you can offer them to them. And that gives you access to infinite smithing stone 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, if you want more smithing stones, you can check out my guide that I made about it recently. That'll be linked in the description. Anyway, so you're going to want 12 each of 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s, uh, and you can use those to upgrade the lance up to plus 12. Um, I only brought it up to plus 7 um, because I didn't feel like farming runes but you're going to want to upgrade it as much as you can. After that, we're going to go back to Raya, talk to her, and she will take you to the Volcano Manor. For the sake of this guide, I'm going to skip all of the assassination missions that you can get from Tanith here. Um, so you're going to miss out on a few items if you skip these assassination missions, but um, they require you to go through a pretty significant part of the game to actually finish all of them. So uh, I think they're kind of worth skipping unless you want the weapons and items. Um, so that's up to you, but uh, in this guide, we're only concerned about getting the Blasphemous Blade, so we're just going to skip that whole thing and just go straight to Rykard and kill him uh, for the Blasphemous Blade. So you can go into the drawing room and talk to Bernal there if you haven't grabbed an Impaling Thrust for your Lance yet. I think you need to do one assassination mission before he uh, sells items to you here, uh, but make sure you have Impaling Thrust on the Lance. And then in this room, on the north side of the drawing room hallway, uh, there's an illusory wall, so we're going to take that and head through the sex dungeon back here. Uh, we're going to need to kill this Bloodhound Knight for his claws, but before we attack him, uh, just grab the Sight of Grace over here, so if he kills you, you don't have to run all the way back through the sex dungeon. This guy is pretty weak, so it shouldn't be hard to kill him before he has a chance to attack us. So, put Golden Vow on any weapon, I just used it on one of the spare clubs that I had. Um, but you're going to want Golden Vow equipped on a weapon, and you're going to cast that before the fight. And then we're going to use the Lance with Impaling Thrust. Preferably, you'll have the Lance upgraded to at least plus 12. I only have it at plus 7, but that's more than enough to kill this guy. So, cast Golden Vow, drink your Wondrous Physic if you want to, uh, and then you can just sneak up on him and hit him with Impaling Thrust. Two Impaling Thrusts will break his stance. Then you can get the Repost. And then when he wakes up, you just hit him with another two Impaling Thrusts. You might have to dodge an attack or two, but he should die pretty easily. And you're going to grab the Bloodhound Claws off of his corpse. 
We're going to use those claws to kill the gods can noble really easily. So we're going to want to upgrade them and I didn't have any runes. So I came over to Grail to do a rune farm. I have an entire video about this rune farm. So check it out if you need more information about it. But essentially we're going to use a glitch to make Grail respawn. So normally when you kill her, she only dies once and then doesn't respawn. But there's a glitch you can do to make her respawn. So take the claws. You don't have to worry about upgrading them yet because we're focusing on the bleed. You're going to want to make sure you two hand the claws. So pull down triangle or Y or whatever and hit uh, R1 to two hand them. And then you're going to put blood grease on it. That way they do 90 bleed on hit because they have a built in 60 bleed buildup. And you're going to attack Grail's tail over here. Uh, and that causes bleeds on her that will kill her way faster. She has like 60,000 health. Um, so you're never going to kill her without using the bleeds. Once her health is pretty low, you're going to get on Torrent and keep hitting her. Hit her only a couple times so you have enough stamina to start sprinting when she dies. As soon as you see her die and like her tail moves like that, you want to run back to the site of Grace and rest at it. And that way you get the runes from her dying. In this case, it was 50,000 runes. But she also respawns. So you can do that farm as much as you want uh, to farm runes in the early game. So get a bunch of runes and go back to the round table hole to upgrade the claws. If you grabbed a bunch of smithing stone fives from the sealed tunnel, then you can bring them up past plus 12. Um, but I just got a bunch of one, two, threes, and fours from the twin maiden husks and brought them up to plus 12 because that should be enough. And then with the spare runes I had left over, I just put a bunch of points into my vigor. Vigor is really important so you don't get one shot by the godskin noble or by Reichardt. Also in the wondrous physic, we're going to use the spiked crack tier to increase our charge attack damage. And we're going to use the green spill crystal tier to increase our maximum stamina so we can get more hits on the noble before running out of stamina. You're also going to want to craft a bunch of sleep pots. Pro tip, if you have like fire pots or something like that um, and you need to free up the slots for your crack pots, instead of throwing them, you can just go to your chest and just store them in the chest. While they're stored in the chest, that frees up the cracked pots in your inventory so you can craft more pots of a different type. And then later on, you can just grab them back out of the chest if you want them. Um, so you don't have to waste your pots if you have excess ones uh, that you're not going to use. In case you need extra cracked pots, four should be enough for this fight, as you're going to see. Um, but if you need more, you can go to the merchant over here in the north part of Limgrave. Um, he sells a cracked pot. Uh, there's also a merchant over in the Weeping Peninsula at the Castle Morn Rampart. So I'll follow the road south through Limgrave. He should be at the end of the road and you'll see him by the big castle wall. Um, I think he sells a cracked pot. Uh, there's another one up in Kalid. So uh, we're actually going to end up coming over here later. Um, but by the minor earth tree in Kalid, there's a route that extends out over the sea um, directly to the north of the earth tree itself. Um, and there's a cracked pot on that. You can look up a location guide if you need more cracked pots, but uh, yeah, so like six, seven should be enough. And then uh, you may also want to use the Axe Talisman. I ended up sticking with Radagon's Sword Seal um, because it's nice to have. We grabbed that at Fort Faroff, and you're going to want a weapon with Golden Vow on it so we can cast that as a buff uh, to fight the Godskin Noble. So anyway, go back to the Prison Town Church. We need to go to the temple I was just looking up at instead of going through the entire prison town. And obviously, there's a bunch of items and stuff that you're going to want to loot here. So, you know, explore it at some point. Um, but we're going to take a shortcut through the town so you can jump down to this little roof over here and then drop down onto this cliff and then drop down onto the rooftop of the building uh, in the lava. And then you're going to want to head to the south from here. So jump onto this rooftop and then jump across uh, on the claws. They come with bloodhound step by default. So normally the lava slows you down. You can fat roll through it. But if you use bloodhound step, then you can pass through it even faster. Um, so that's really useful. So use Bloodhound Step on the claws. Once you get to the shoreline, we're going to head west and you're going to see there's this rooftop over here. You can come around it and on top of it, there's a somber stone six, which we're going to use to upgrade the Serpent Hunter in a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to follow these stairs up. There's a Mant Serpent with a whip up here. Um, this guy's actually really strong, uh, so you can sneak past him. I tried to distract him with a throwing dagger, uh, but he saw me, so... I'm going to lure him over to the steps so uh, he's further away from the elevator and doesn't hit me while I'm on this little ass elevator. And then you can bloodhound step past him and take the elevator up to get away from him. Uh, then come to your right over here and there's a second Somberstone 5. We're going to use that to upgrade the Blasphemous Blade later on. Uh, you're going to run past the monk there and instead of going into the temple, come and activate the bridge. So this is a shortcut back to the prison town church site of Grace. And with this shortcut, you don't need to run all the way back through the town in case you die to the Godskin Noble. You're also going to want to have a couple of blue flasks, so make sure you have at least two or three of them. 
So go into the church, make sure you have your sleep pots at the ready. Don't drink your physic or cast any buffs yet. When you go inside, uh, the noble will spawn. I tried hitting him with uh, Hail Mary, um, but I missed. So uh, you can wait until he's doing an animation like that and then hit him with a sleep pot and one should put him to sleep immediately. He sleeps for 60 seconds, so you have time to cast your buffs. So drink the physic, cast Golden Vow, pull out the claws and put blood grease on them. And then you're going to hit him with four charged R2s. So that's one, two, three. So he'll wake up by the end of the third one. Um, you're going to want to back off and hit him with a throwing dagger to keep his stance from uh, regenerating. Um, but it shouldn't be too hard to get the last one on him. That'll break his stance, and then you can get the repost on him. You see, we got the uh, couple bleeds so far, and he's already nearly dead. Once he gets down to half health, he does his phase transition, so hit him with another sleep pot while he's doing that. Um, here he did his road roller. You can blood down, step through him to dodge it, and as you can see, he falls asleep uh, not long afterwards. So once he's asleep, I'm going to recast my buffs to make sure that they're all topped off. Uh, make sure you put the blood grease on the claws, and then hit him with four more charge R2s. One, two, three, and then he did his Black Flame Ritual. I hit him with a throwing dagger, and that ended up breaking his stance. I didn't expect that to happen, um, but it's all right. And then I'm going to put him to sleep one more time uh, in a second here. Try not to get owned by him. Bloodhound Step is invaluable for uh, dodging his attacks. It's, it's kind of overpowered, uh, but yeah. So that last sleep pot. Um, I think the first three sleeps will put him uh, to sleep with one sleep pot, and then after that, you're going to need at least two. So try to be efficient with your use of sleep pots. As you can see, he's pretty easy to kill, so uh, shouldn't be too much trouble. If you want a more detailed guide for this fight, you can check out my Eleonora's Pole Blade video, um, but I doubt that you're going to really need that with this method. And then after that, um, we're going to continue to head through the Volcano Manor, so take that elevator up here, run past the Lava Slugs, um, there's a Somberstone 6 and a Somberstone 7 that we're going to grab in here. So first, you're going to run past the Virgin Abductor. Make sure you grab this elevator here. Um, we're going to need this uh, in case we die. This is a shortcut that takes us past the Virgin Abductor and all that. Uh, when you get to this area over here, jump off the Gargoyle, and there's a little hidden room over here that has a bunch of Basilisks and another Somberstone 6 in it. So we need two Somberstone 6s to upgrade the Serpent Hunter and the Blasphemous Blade. Then when you come back, so um, I had actually ended up having to redo this segment because I didn't grab this Stone Sword key on my first run, so that's why there's a cut to a different clip here. But come to your left over here, jump through this window, and on one of these beds, there's a corpse that has a Stone Sword key. So in addition to the one we grabbed at the Stormhill Shack, that makes two Stone Sword keys. And then you're going to head to the right over here, climb up the ladder, and this takes us back to where we were before we dropped down. Uh, and then you're going to run past this whip guy. If you stay close to that pillar there, then he shouldn't hit you. Uh, then go through this door. So there's a doorway outside there that takes us to Rykard. But first, we're going to come up here and use the stone sword keys to open this door. So as you can see, I had failed to grab two stone sword keys. You can also buy a few of them from the twin maiden husks in case you need a couple extra ones. So keep that in mind. But while you're in the area, it's probably better to just grab the stone sword key from that guy on the bed. Anyway, so go back to this door. Uh, when we come into the sex dungeon room, instead of going down the cages, we're going to come to our right over here, stand on top of this candle, and line your head up with that curve that you see on the wall there, and then you can just take a couple steps forward, and that drops you down onto this lower platform. Then you're going to head through the doorway, run through this back area. There's the dagger talisman up here. We're not going to end up using this in this guide, but I just want to show you how to grab that. And then you're going to end up jumping down the cages from here, and then you're going to want to orient yourself towards the west side of the room. We need to head west, so I didn't do that here, which is why I did a freeze frame there. Uh, but yeah, so take the west way out of this room. There's a bunch of albinorgs you gotta run past. Don't get grabbed of them, because they do a fuckload of damage if they grab you. But up here, behind the Virgin Abductor, there's a Somberstone 7, which we're gonna use to upgrade the Blasphemous Blade later on. And then, we're gonna head back into this room, and now we go to the east, to the fireplace room, and grab the Royal Knight's Resolve Ash of War. Unfortunately, after that, you have to go back to the Temple of Yigle, where we fought the Godskin Noble, and come back through this whole section to get to the teleporter to go to Rykard. So that's a little obnoxious, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Make sure you grab the Set of Grace in this cave, go into the fog wall, and grab the Serpent Hunter. 
do not start the fight with Rykard yet. Instead, we're going to fast travel back to the round table hold, and we're going to use the Somber Stones we picked up to upgrade the Serpent Hunter. So we have one Somber Stone 7. Um, do not use it on the Serpent Hunter. You don't need to bring the Serpent Hunter up to plus 7. If you use it on the Serpent Hunter, then you're going to have to go through a whole process to get another one to upgrade the Blasphemous Blade later on. So make sure you only bring the Serpent Hunter up to plus 6. So you can see on the left there, it says plus 6. I'm going to stop upgrading it now. You're also going to take the Lance that we upgraded earlier, and you're going to put a Royal Knight's Resolve on that, and you're going to want to upgrade that to at least plus 12, uh, so make sure you do that. So we've got a plus 12 Lance and a plus 6 Serpent Hunter. Do not bring the Serpent Hunter up to plus 7, I cannot stress that enough. Anyway, so there's two different methods to fight Rykard that I'm going to show you. So the first one is going to be the Power Stance, the Lance, and the Serpent Hunter. In order to do this, you're going to need uh, at least 20 Strength. So, because the Lance has a requirement of 20 Strength. So I put the Strength Knot Crystal Tier in my Flask of Wonders Physic. If you look at the bottom left and see the Lance, there's a red X. That goes away when I drink the Physic, because I now meet the Strength requirement for it. So make sure you can uh, meet that Strength requirement somehow um, while one-handing it. Um, I'm also using Radagon Sword Seal just for the extra stats that it gives me. So for method one, you're going to put the Lance with Royal Knight's Resolve in your right hand, and you're going to put the Serpent Hunter in your left hand. So you see, if I'm holding just the Serpent Hunter, it gets this like beam of wind or light or whatever that gets a lot of range. And then if I put the Serpent Hunter in my right hand, then when I do Power Stance attacks by hitting L1, then that causes the beam of light from both spears. But if I put the Lance in the right hand and the Serpent Hunter in the left hand, so again, that's the Lance in the right hand and the Serpent Hunter in the left hand, you can cast Royal Knight's Resolve on the Lance, and that buffs the damage that you do against Rykard. You don't see the beams here, but they do get that super long hitbox that lets you hit Rykard. So we're going to do a fuckload of damage like this. And then what you can do is you can crouch and hit L1. So... These crouching attacks, you can just crouch L1, crouch L1, crouch L1, and this is going to make you do a shitload of DPS. Um, you can see here, I am hitting things at a distance because I do get the super long hitbox that the Serpent Hunter gets. You just don't see the effect. So what you're going to do is drink the Physic. Again, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have the Strength tier in it, or you have 20 Strength to meet the Lance's requirement to hold it one-handed. Then cast Golden Vow and run up to Rykard and just start wailing on him. Cast Royal Knight's Resolve, then Crouch L1, Crouch L1. If he does this attack where he sticks his head in the ground, you have to two-hand the Lance or the Spear, it doesn't matter. You have to two-hand one of the weapons and block that attack. You cannot dodge that attack. You have to block it. And then you see here I messed up a dodge, but I didn't get grabbed by him, so it was okay. Anyway, so after that, uh, just cast Royal Knight's Resolve on the Lance again, and just go to town on him. Crouch L1, Crouch L1. At the end of Phase 1, make sure you drink a Blue Flask, cast Golden Vow, give it a second after the head lands, and then cast Royal Knight's Resolve again. Let's get the cutscene, and now you're gonna fuck up right card. Crouch L1, Crouch L1. You're only gonna want to do, like, one or two attacks at a time. Um, and then wait. You don't want to like spam attacks because then you won't be able to dodge um, while you're in the middle of an animation. So, you know, be patient with it. Um, we're doing so much damage that, you know, it doesn't matter if you take your time a little bit. He's never going to get his uh, Reign of Hellfire Skulls attack that always kills people when you're doing this shit. So take your time. And yeah, just like that, he's dead. I could kill him here, but I want to show you method two, so I'm going to let him kill me. So, you know, Anyway, so method two, we're going to have the Serpent Hunter in the right hand, and we're going to have the Jellyfish Shield in the left hand. So the Jellyfish Shield also has a 20 strength requirement, so I'm going to use the Wondrous Physic to meet that strength requirement. Um, when you cast the Jellyfish Shield's Ash of War, it gives you a 20% damage boost to all damage that you do. And then if you hold down L1 to block with the Jellyfish Shield, if you hold L1 and hit R1, you can do these shield pokes using the Serpent Hunter, and that lets you attack way faster than its regular R1s. So there's its regular R1s, you saw how slow they are. But if I hold down block and attack like that, then uh, you get much faster attacks with the shield pokes. Now if you unequip the Jellyfish Shield, then it cancels the effect and you have to recast the buff. So make sure you uh, keep the Jellyfish Shield out, um, or make sure you recast it if you cast Golden Vow or something like that. So I switch to the club, cast Golden Vow, then I pull out the shield, 
and cast the Contagious Fury. You would also want to drink your Wondrous Physic uh, before doing that, so you can actually cast Contagious Fury. And then you can do pretty much the same thing. Just hold L1 and hit R1. Uh, you don't get quite as much DPS against the Serpent, but you have the protection of the shield, which is nice. Um, again, it also makes it easier to block this attack. As you saw, you cannot dodge an attack when it's coming. You have to block it. It's literally impossible to dodge. Um, but yeah, so I like having the protection of the shield um, because, you know, it just makes it easier to survive his attacks. Um, it's a little bit less risky than doing it the Power Stance way, uh, but, you know, you still get tons of DPS anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Same thing again, switch over to the club, drink a Blue Flask, cast Golden Vow, give it a second, and then cast Contagious Fury, skip the cutscene, and then go to town on Rykard. So you're going to see right here I'm mashing R1, because I know this animation takes a long time for him to do, so he can't hit me. Um, but when he's not doing that, you're going to want to only hit once or twice at a time and then get ready to dodge. Um, as you saw there, I messed up that dodge, but I wasn't spamming R1, um, so at least I had the opportunity to attempt to dodge. Uh, if you just mash R1, then you're going to be stuck in the attack animation and you won't be able to dodge any attacks, and that's how you die. So always just be patient, space out your attacks, don't get too greedy, uh, and yeah. You know, uh, his attacks should be pretty easy to block if you want to block them with the Jellyfish Shield, um, as long as you keep an eye on their stamina and don't get, let it get super low. Um, but his attacks are also really slow and easy to dodge, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with him. Um, except when he does that attack, because the timing on it's fucked up, but that's my fault. Um, so I could kill him here, but I'm going to let him do his Reign of Hellfire Skulls thing, whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, so I can show you how to deal with it when he does it. So... You know, you can see easily, I would have been able to kill him with no effort, uh, but I let him do this, just so I can show you it. So when he does it, you want to run away from Rykard, because at the end of this, he's going to hit you with the Taker's Flames on his Blasphemous Blade. Um, so you're going to want to be away from Rykard, and you want to just keep sprinting. Um, try not to turn too much, because that um, lets the skulls catch up to you, and you might get hit. So you want to try to run in a straight line. Um, but... Yeah, as long as you keep sprinting, um, you know, manage your stamina a little bit. Try not to let it run 100% out if you can avoid it. And then he saw at the end of the attack, he did his Blasphemous Blade, and that stops the uh, uh, skulls from spawning, and then just fuck him up. Um, but you probably won't need to deal with that, because you'll probably kill him well beforehand. Anyway, so on death, he gives you his Great Rune, and he gives you the Remembrance of the Blasphemous. So bring that back to the round table hold. This door will have opened, and you can talk to Enya. And she allows you to convert that remembrance into the Blasphemous Blade. So that's what we're going to do. So get that bad boy right there. It has a 22 strength requirement and a 21 faith requirement. So um, you're going to get a bunch of runes from Rykard, obviously. And you can use those to level up if you haven't already. Um, I brought strength up to 17 because I get plus 5 strength from Radagon Sword Seal. Um, 17 plus 5 because 22. Again, you can also use the Rune Farm to get a bunch of runes to level up and also to upgrade the uh, Blasphemous Blade with. Speaking of upgrading the Blasphemous Blade, we still need to grab a Somberstone 8, 9, and 10. So in the Dragon Barrel, we're going to head west. Uh, we're going to follow the road up to the Divine Tower of Caleb there. It's just north of the map, so grab the map and then head just north to the Divine Tower. Uh, you'll see there's this Scarab here. When you kill it, it explodes, so be careful of that. Um, I ended up hitting it off the cliff here, but it explodes. Uh, but when you kill it, it drops a somber stone 8, and then we're going to come back to the east over here, and we're going to go right around the corner down here, where we're going to grab a somber stone 9. There's also a rune arc and a couple other things here, but the important one is the somber stone. And then I needed another uh, somber stone 4, because we had only picked up the one in Lyurnia, so I went back to EG and bought that. And then EG can upgrade your stuff for you, so we're going to bring this bad boy up to plus 9. And then we're going to work on getting a plus 10 in a minute. Um, but, I mean, you know, even for the majority of your playthrough, a plus 9 is going to be ultra strong. A plus 9 somber weapon. Um, I mean, I I'm getting like 632 AR, and my character's like level 40 or something like that. Um, so yeah. But to get the somber stone 10, we're going to do Vari's quest line to get to Mogwin Palace. So after having killed a demigod, um, Rykard was a demigod, obviously. 
um, he'll come to the Rose Church. You're going to want to head back to the first step, and he leaves a message there, and um, when you read that message, it gives you the uh, clapping gesture, um, so make sure you grab that, because I think it despawns if you talk to Vare here before you read the message. But anyway, so come to the Rose Church, talk to Vare. He wants you to invade people using these festering bloody fingers. Um, you don't actually have to invade people. There's an NPC that we can kill um, that will also fulfill that requirement of the quest. So that NPC is up here in the Writhe Blood Ruins in the Altus Plateau. So you can see them here. It's in that building right there. So what we're going to do is head back to the Altus Highway Junction and follow the road to the north until we come to the Broken Bridge. So here's the road. Follow it north. We'll come to the Broken Bridge. Grab the Sight of Grace. There's also a merchant here you can talk to, and he sells a couple good things. Uh, but take the teleporter on the bridge. This takes you to the other end, at the north end of the Altus Plateau. The ever brilliant so back there, that's where we came from. What we're going to do is come around the west side here, follow the cliff over to this. So those are tomb uh, tombstones that we can use to get down to the lower part of the cliff safely. So drop down the tombstones. And then underneath the bridge that we were just on top of, there's an archway there that has a site of grace. So make sure you grab that. Uh, I didn't bother to while I was here. Uh, anyway, so head towards that building that we marked. Um, there's some soldiers nearby, so I decided to take the opportunity to test out Taker's Flames on this plus line bass and this blade. Suffice it to say, it's pretty good. Um, can't complain about that. Anyway, inside the building, kill the dog, and there's an invasion sign that we're going to use to invade Magnus the Beast Claw. Uh, using our plus 9 Blasphemous Blade, he shouldn't be too hard to kill. He dodges a lot, um, but, uh, you know, uh, you'll you'll be fine, I think. Uh, and then on death, he drops another Somber Stone 6, um, but we don't need that right now. Uh, go back to Vare, and he will give you the Lord of Blood's favor. He wants you to dye it with a Maiden's Blood. So we're going to go back to the foot of the Four Belfries, where we grab the Jellyfish Shield. And we're going to go up the hill to the four belfries. So there's a road from here that you can follow straight up to it. Uh, there's a bunch of troll knights that you need to pass by, but they shouldn't give you too much trouble. Uh, once you get to the four belfries, we're going to come to the one that has a message that says Precipice of Anticipation. So go to the top belfry, grab the Sight of Grace. There's a chest here that has an imbued stone sword key in it. Um, there's also two other stone sword keys. There's three total belfries that you can use them on. Um, there's two other stone sword keys in case you already use this one for whatever reason. One of them is in Ray of the Caria. It's kind of complicated to get, so I'm not going to go over it here. The other one is in Celia, Town of Sorcery. You have to light one of the fires, and then um, it breaks a seal, and that seal is blocking a chest, and that chest has the stone key in it. So like I said, in case you already use this one, there are two others you can grab, but you kind of need to go out of the way to grab them, so you're going to want to use this one. Anyway, make sure you go to the one that takes you to the Precipice of Anticipation. Lo and behold, that takes you back to the Chapel of Anticipation at the start of the game, where we're going to kill the Grafted Scion for some sweet revenge. Um, obviously, nearly maxed out weapon, uh, first enemy in the game, not going to give you much trouble. That should go without saying. Um, here's the build in case you need to know for some reason because it's the Grafted Scion. Anyway, go back up into the chapel and your dead maiden. You will have the option to dye the cloth with the maiden's blood. So do that and we will now have the dye the Lord of the Blood's favor. Bring that back to Vare at the Rose Church and he will anoint you with a bloody finger. So offer a finger. You can use the Bloody Finger to invade, um, but we're not worried about that right now. Talk to him again, and he gives you the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. And if you go into your inventory and use it, it will take you to Mogwin Palace. So do that. From here, we're going to head up the stairs towards the top of Mogwin Palace, where Moog himself is. We don't actually need to fight Moog for this. Um, that's just where we're going. Uh, I'm just going to speed through it, because there's just a bunch of fucking putrid corpses along the way. So just run up the steps. You can jump over that big mass thing here. Inside this temple, um, there's a couple Sanguine Nobles that'll spawn, and they do a ton of damage, so you're going to want to make sure you run away from them as fast as you can. But at the end over here, there's a set of grace, so grab that, sit at it so the Nobles don't murder you. Um, if you have Kukris or Throwing Daggers, that's really nice over here. Um, the Kukris are better because they make a louder noise, because we're going to need to distract this Sanguine Noble up here. So jump on this little wall here, line your head up with the pillar that you see off in the distance, and toss a kukri at it. That will distract the Sanguine Noble, 
then you can run up, jump on top of these tombstones over here, and inside this chest, there is a somber ancient dragon smithing stone, which we will use to bring the blasphemous blade up to plus 10. Go back to the round table hold and do that, and boom. Um, so yeah, that only took me like two hours of playtime to get, so that's pretty cool. Finally, as a little bonus, I'm going to make a quick little build to show you how to make this thing as powerful as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is head down to the Weeping Peninsula. So this is at the south end of Limgrave. Just follow the road, go over the bridge, and then you're going to take the road and follow it to the right here. Um, there's a map of the area down here, uh, but you're going to want to grab that and then come up to the north over here. By this pond that you see, there's like a raised area, and that's where this site of grace is. So make sure you grab this. And then from here, instead of going over the bridge to our west, we're going to go down into the forest to the north. And at the very top end of it, just north of the ruins, um, there is the Faith Knot Crystal Tier, which increases our faith by 10. So you're going to see that's over here, surrounded by a bunch of Miranda Sprouts. Um, we're grabbing this to put in our Wondrous Physic, because the Blasphemous Blade's Ash of War scales exclusively with faith, so increasing your faith by 10 for 3 minutes is going to make that do a lot more damage. After that, we're going to head to the Third Church of America. We're going to take a bunch of spirit springs up the uh, cliffs to the north of it, and we're going to head up to the Minor Erd Tree in Kaled. So here are the spirit springs. There's one up here. Go past the wolves and then jump up the second one. This takes you up to the main road in Limgrave. Uh, if you go too close to the church, I'm not sure why she didn't spawn here, um, but there's an NPC here that'll invade you um, when you come to this church, but you're going to want to grab the Site of Grace that's inside the church and then head on down to the uh, Minor Earth Tree. There's a bunch of guardians along the way that'll attack you when you run past them. Instead of dealing with them, I decided to quit out and just uh, reload the area, and that makes them go back to where they spawn in and makes them lose their aggro on you so you don't have to deal with them. Uh, so we're going to kill the Putrid Avatar here. Um, with the It has a 100% weakness to fire, so the Blasphemous Blade Ash of War is going to fucking destroy it. Um, so drink your Physic with the Faith tier in it, uh, cast Golden Vow, and then just press L2. Um, I managed to get two off, and then it hit me, and then I just attacked it, uh, just bonk it with the stick, and it's dead. So this Putrid Avatar will drop the Flame Shrouding Cracked tier, which increases your fire damage by, I think, 20% for three minutes uh, inside the Wondrous Physic. Take Your Slames does exclusively fire damage, so that's obviously really good. Anyway, go back to the Smoldering Church after that, and we're going to head uh, to the east into Kaled, where we're going to grab the Sight of Grace over here at the Shack of the Rotting, and then we're going to head south to take a shortcut down to Fort Gale. So jump over these rocks here. You see Fort Gale off in the distance. Run over that, grab the Sight of Grace just to the side of it, and then you can take this little back path here to uh, avoid all the enemies on the main road that's there. We're going to go around behind Fort Gale, and you'll see there's these two flame chariots guarding Flame Grant Me Strength. Flame Grant Me Strength is an incantation, so you're going to need a sacred seal of some kind. I got the finger seal from the Twin Maiden Husks. You can equip it in the Memorize Spells menu at a site of grace, uh, and then we're going to go to our Wondrous Physic and equip the Faith tier and the Flame tier. Um, so Flame Grant Me Strength increases your physical damage and fire damage by, I think, 15%. Um, for like 30 seconds or something like that. So in combination with Golden Vow and the Wondrous Physic mix that we have, um, it's going to make Taker's Flames do an obscene amount of damage. And also the sword is also going to be really strong too. Um, the sword, like melee swings are really good, um, but Taker's Flames is just ridiculous. Plus it restores a whole bunch of your health whenever it hits an enemy. If you hit three enemies with it, then it fully restores your health, so it's kind of nuts. Um, but yeah, so like here I'm fighting Margit. I want the Talisman patch that we get from Margit. Um, so we can add a couple of things to this build, and you see I'm, I'm spanking him, um, hit him with the Charge R2, and it does, you know, a quarter of his health and damage or whatever, and then just finish him off with the Taker's Flames. Um, pro tip for using this thing, you don't want to just spam L2. You want to hit it once or twice, it's just like any other attack, any other um, enemy that you're fighting. You want to hit it once or twice and then get ready to dodge the boss's attacks. If you just mindlessly spam attacks, then you're going to get hit a lot, and that's going to really hurt not only your health, um, but, you know, your damage efficiency or whatever. You want to be patient in between attacks and get ready to dodge when necessary. But anyway, so I killed Margit for his talisman pouch, and then um, I came and killed Godric. Uh, obviously, you can see I'm just doing a fuckload of damage to him. Uh, 
finish him off as soon as phase two starts. Boom. So with two demigods dead now, so that's uh, Rykard and Godric in this case, you can go back to Enya and she will give you the third talisman pouch. So make sure you grab that. So the next talisman I want to grab is done by uh, talking to Blythe. So we encountered Blythe at the Mistwood Ruins. After hearing Blythe howl at the Mistwood Ruins, you can come back and talk to Kill about the howling in the Mistwood, and he will give you the finger snap gesture. So if you go into the pause menu, go over to gestures, you can hit Y or triangle to switch the gesture in a slot, select the finger snap. That's it right there. And then from the menu, you can hit A on it, and this will do the gesture. So you're going to go back to the Mistwood Ruins. Um, here's that bear from before. Um, it doesn't really hold up against the plus 10 Blasphemous Blade, uh, as you might expect. So that's pretty cool. But underneath the tower, stand under the tower and use the finger snap gesture, and that will make Blythe jump down to talk to you. Uh, so when you talk to him, he tells you that he's looking for someone named Darawil, um, and he wants to kill him. So Darawil is in this thing over here. This is in Everjail. So you're going to want to go down to that Everjail, go inside of it. You can summon Blythe here if you want, um, but with this thing, you're not going to need him. So I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, so cast your buffs while you're still inside the circle. When you leave the circle, um, the enemy will spawn. So cast the buffs inside the circle. Then step out of the circle and press L2. And congratulations, you have killed Bloodhound Knight Darawell. After killing him, you'll leave the Everjail automatically. Talk to Blythe. He'll give you the Somberstone too, um, so that's cool, whatever. Uh, but what you're going to do is talk to him again, and he will tell you to go talk to EG, uh, who we've already talked to. So go back to EG. You have to talk to him using his talk dialogue a couple times, and then uh, you'll have the option to tell him that Blythe sent you. Once you tell him that, he will sell the Carry and Filigreed quest, which reduces the FP consumed by your Ashes of War. Um, that's nice to have with this thing because this thing uses 30 FP. Um, so you see, without it, um, it has a FP cost of 30, as you can see here. Uh, when I put it on, I think it goes down to 23. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, that gets you more efficiency with your FP. Um, you're going to want to upgrade your faith a lot and also your mind and vigor. Um, so vigor gives you more health so you don't die. Mind gives you more FP so you can cast Taker's Flames more. And faith uh, increases the damage that Taker's Flames does. Um, so if you found that helpful or interesting, uh, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Leave any questions or comments you have down below. And I'll catch you later.